untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard games video. Today we're taking a look at a Jeskai colored Cody deck titled Cody's Command, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. And the deck, of course, features four copies of Cody Vociferous Codex, the three mana, one four legendary artifact creature construct, saying we cannot cast permanent spells, which means we have to get there with instants and sorceries. And for four mana, we can tap Cody to add all five colors to our mana pool. And when we cast our next spell this turn, exile cards from the top of our library until we exile an instant or sorcery card with lesser mana value, and until end of turn we may cast that card without paying its mana cost, and then the other cards go on the bottom in a random order. So Cody can provide a ton of card advantage if we can chain together some instants and sorceries, some of which also make tokens which can help us end the game without needing to cast permanent spells. So let's take a look at the entire deck, starting out with 4 copies of Shock as a 1 mana instant dealing 2 damage to any target. So this is the only spell we can hit if we cast a 2 mana spell with Cody's ability and the fact that this can also target players is what makes me play this over Frostbite and a bunch of Snowlands. That way, if the opponent doesn't have any creatures in play, we can at the very least target the opponent directly to try and burn them out. And same goes with four copies of a Royal Eruption, the two mana sorcery dealing three damage to any target, can always go upstairs, can also be kicked for five additional mana, in which case we can deal five damage to any target. Even if we cast it with Kicker, the mana value will still be two, so we won't be able to hit anything other than Shock with our Royal Eruption. Then at 3 mana we've got the full playset of Igneous Inspiration as another burn spell dealing 3 damage to any target, also lets us learn, so once again a card that can also go upstairs if needed, and then we've got 7 sideboard cards to choose from, with all these different lessons, environmental sciences to hit our land drop, teachings and introduction to prophecy as card draw spells, illuminate history can refresh our hand and potentially make a 3-2 token, we've got elemental summoning as a 5 mana spell, so perfect with Cody's ability, and then introduction to annihilation, a 5 mana removal spell, and finally Mascot Exhibition can also help us end the game. Then we also have two copies of Prismari Command, which has a bunch of different modes between dealing two damage to any target, so once again can also go upstairs. So we've got a lot of burn spells to help us end the game. We can also draw two and discard two, target player can make a treasure token which can help us ramp, or we can destroy target artifact. Then we've got our four copies of Cody, at four mana, the full playset of Behold, the multiverse, and as you'll notice we don't have much going on on turn two, so being able to foretell this for two mana makes our curve much more efficient, and then later we can cast it to scry two and then draw two cards, and then we also have the full playset of Experimental Overload, a four mana sorcery creating an XX blue and red weird creature token where X is the number of instants and sorceries in our graveyard, and then we can return an instant or sorcery card from our graveyard to our hand and exile Overload, so it gets Back removal and generates a large token if we're in the late game. And then at 5 mana we've got the full playset of Lorehold Command, this is the reason we're splashing a bit of white. Can choose two modes between making a 3-2 spirit creature token, creatures we control get plus one plus so indestructible and haste until end of turn, we can deal 3 damage to any target and gain 3 life, and we can sacrifice a permanent to draw 2 cards, can even decide to generate a 3-2 token and then sacrifice that very same token to draw 2 if needed. And then last but not least we've got the full playset of Alrun's Epiphany as a great spell to ramp into with Cody, and then we can also foretell it on turn 2, so we can potentially cast Alrun's Epiphany on turn 5 if we foretold it on turn 2, cast a Cody on turn 3, and then turn 5 activate Cody to cast Epiphany for 6 mana, generate those 2 bird tokens which also synergize nicely with Lorehold Command's plus 1 plus 0 bonus, and those can help us end the game and provide a ton of advantage as well, since we'll be able to potentially hit one of our more expensive instants and sorcery with Cody's ability, and then we also have two copies of Seagate Restoration as part of our mana base, a 7 mana sorcery that lets us draw cards equal to the number of cards in our hand plus one, and we have no maximum hand size for the rest of the game, so this can also be a nice one to cast with Cody. And then the rest of the mana base includes four of the Rogrin Triome, all 12 pathways in the Jeskai Colors, and then four basic mountains and four basic islands. Could also play basic planes to then search up with environmental sciences, but we really only need a single white, and if we have a Cody in play that can also fix our mana. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with a pretty Cody heavy draw here. Three Codys might be a bit much, but if it survives... It is going to be pretty good, and we can assume that the first one will get answered by removal, so I'll try it. 
On the plays, this might be a mulligan since we don't have a third land yet. And we eventually need to get up to 4 mana to activate Cody. But on the draw, it's worth a shot. Hateful Eidolon, I don't mind killing with a Royal Eruption. Another one. So I could play Cody on three, or we could maybe wait and play Prismari Command first. Opponent has a village rights to sacrifice and draw to in response, so they got good value. Archfiend's Vessel can potentially be reanimated and turn into a 5-5 demon. So our opponent's not playing Lurus as companion, maybe implying something like Rankle being in the deck, or they might just be playing Lurus in the main deck. Igneous Inspiration is not bad. If her opponent's holding up another village rights, I would prefer to just play Cody here. And even if they have Heartless Act or Eliminate, we can still play another one. And another one. Alright, opponent on taps. A Rankle making a sacrifice could also be effective here. But then we can Inspiration Rankle next turn, opponent attacks. So they might have a Myers Grasp in hand, looking to finish off Cody, so we'll just take the two. Acquisitions Expert gonna have a look. They can see two more Cody's. So hoping for land here, if not, Command can make a treasure token. Village Rite's gonna draw two once again. Alright, we found a land, so we get to cast Lorehold Command here. And then we'll deal three to the Eidolon. And probably just make a token. And we hit Prismari Command, which can clean up Archfiend's Vessel, if we want. And then... I'm relatively happy with my hands and keeping a backup Cody. So maybe just make a treasure token. Alright, that was a pretty good turn. The Spirit also... Protects Cody from an Edict effect. Although we can expect the Spirit Token to die to like a Deadweight or Mars Grasp. Alright, Mars Grasp on Cody plus a Deadweight. Fair enough. Good thing we have a backup Cody. And then I'm gonna keep my spells in hand. There's also an argument for keeping land in hand, in case my opponent has another Acquisitions Expert. So I think I'm just gonna pass here. Even though we don't get to keep up Prismari Command. And then Inspiration can learn for maybe a Mascot Exhibition. Which we can ramp into thanks to Cody and our Treasure Token. Opponent looking at the graveyard, maybe a call of the Death Dweller to reanimate two of their creatures, including Archfiend's Vessel, which then turns into a demon. And Acquisitions Experts is gonna trigger and sees two cards from our hand, so sadly they do snipe one of my spells, so I guess command and land. Alright, so Inspiration is guaranteed to hit another burn spell, so we can finish off the demon here. So that's good. Finds a Royal Eruption. And then I think we learn for Mascot Exhibition here. Could also go for Teachings and cast it now since we still have that floating mana, but then we don't get to use it with Cody's ability. 
Some liking the mascots. And pass it back. And then I could trade for the expert. I think I leave the spirit back again in case of a rankle. Don't want my Cody to get sacrificed. Alurus can get back. Maybe a dead weight for my spirits. But Cody survives. And we can cast Mascot Exhibition, hopefully hitting something juicy. Behold's also a good one. And we hit Experimental Overload for free. Getting back. Could get back Mascot Exhibition once again. Could go for Lorehold Command. Both are fine options. Lorehold Command guarantees that we kill Lurus next turn. Mascot Exhibition just puts more stuff in play. Yeah, let's go with the Mascot Exhibition here. And our opponent packs it in. Sweet, Cody gets there. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. And yeah, this hand looks functional. No Cody, but essentially three lands. Some good removal early. And then overload both a threat and a way to get back one of our spells. Opponent on blue-white and a turn to Clarion Spirits is not going to live to tell the tale. Opponent on a Bant deck with a Raidan. Okay. So Ignis Inspiration seems fine. And then learn for... Don't really need sciences. So it's either like a teachings or introduction to prophecy or we can go big with exhibition, but that's gonna take a while. Let's go with kind of a safe bet here with prophecy since I don't know if I'm gonna be able to empty my hand faster than the opponent for teachings. All right, protector shields we can eventually blow up with a Prismari command. For now, I could overload, but I think I'm happy just drawing some cards here with Prophecy. And then I'll keep one land. Then probably play this tapped. No lack of card advantage here with double overload and Lorehold command. Opponent foretells twice, and there's Prismari Command for shield, so can blow that up. I guess we'll just pass with our mana up. Opponent casts Behold for four. So destroy an artifact, and then what else do we choose here? Treasure token or draw to discard two. Finding Cody would be nice, so maybe we'll draw to discard two. Epiphany's not bad, one land can go, and I'll ditch a royal eruption. Makes our overload better too. Alright. So I can overload and foretell Epiphany. Get back. How about Igneous Inspiration? Poden might have their own Alron's Epiphany here coming up. It's going to be Clarion Spirits in two. Brazen Borrower to essentially kill our weird token. 
and another card foretold. All right, so step one, probably cast Epiphany. Casting Epiphany is more impactful if we have some board presence of our own. So it is reasonable to wait. Although if I hit an extra land drop, we can maybe deploy our hand more efficiently. Shock's also a nice one. So I can shock the Clarion Spirits. And then... Cast Overload, get back Shock, and have a Shock available. And then, if our opponent has their own Epiphany, it might be better to keep the birds on defense. So... Let's overload, get back Shock, just to have a cheaper answer here. And then pass a turn. Shock can also answer the Brazen Borrower, although the birds do a good job on defense too there. So one card in hand and then four cards in exile. Opponent doesn't seem like a control deck, so I don't think they have Doomscar, but they might have more copies of Behold or Alrun's Epiphany in exile. I'm okay with the trade. And there's the Epiphany, number one. Probably gonna end up shocking a bird. Since I suspect they'll have another Alrun's Epiphany coming up. So this could have been devastating if our opponent had any sort of board presence. Let's see if they have a third one. It's just going to be a Clarion Spirits. Into Strict Proctor. Okay. Don't have any creatures with ETB effects. And yeah, they might have been waiting on their Epiphany just to have a bigger board. So we want to once again answer it. So the weird can attack. We're probably gonna shock overload shock again. Put on chumps. And we've got a shock available. Seven mana. Opponent moves to combats. Yeah, I'll just shock the bird here. Saves us two damage, assuming they have another epiphany. So we still don't really know what green is for. Could be for Toski, which makes sense in a deck with a bunch of tokens. Ooh, Starnheim Unleashed, making a bunch of angels, that's scary. All right, we found Cody. Is it too little too late? So the weirds can attack, I'm fine if they trade. And then I could still play Cody, play Inspiration or Fortel Behold. If they block, I could also decide to make my team indestructible, so we've got quite a few options here. Start by attacking. Triple blocks the 6-6. Six, six. So if I give this plus 1 plus 0, oh, goes up to 7. I could deal 3 to an angel as well. So it would save my token. And we would kill 2 angels, is that worth it? I think I would rather just inspiration finish off an angel, play Cody. And then learn for Mascot Exhibition, perhaps. And hope they don't have another Epiphany.
Just gonna be a Clarion Spirit into Brazen Borrower to make a 1-1. Alright, feels like we should be able to take over this game as we pick up another shock. So, can cast Mascot Exhibition, see what we hit. At the very least, we get a 2 1 Inkling that can block. And um, I'm okay attacking with the Weird. So, I can maybe start there. Put on chumps. Could also go for Lore Hold Command plus Shock, which is guaranteed to at least kill the Angel. Now nah, we'll go with the Mascot. It's Ignis Inspiration, which can deal with the Brazen Borrower. And learn for. Maybe a bit of life gain could be useful and an extra land. Could go for introduction too, but we've got more removal in hand. Opponent casts Opts, probably looking for like a Toski or their remaining Epiphanies. It's going to be Behold the Multiverse. So the Angel is going to hurt. I'm okay trading for one of the bird tokens. Our opponent has to pay for their own temple if they want to scry, but they don't. Opponent did foretell a card, so it could be another epiphany that they're setting up, which is why they don't want to trade here. They also have to be careful on the way back, since we do have a pretty big board ourselves now. So, Lorehold Command plus Shock can finish off the Angel. Could also pump the team with Lorehold Command. Yeah, we've got quite a few options. Could also attack on the ground first, see what happens, and then decide accordingly what to do. Because Lorehold Command is an instance, so... Opponent chumps and trades. So right now we have four going through, which is probably fine. But let me activate Cody first here. And then Command can deal three to the Angel. And what else do we want to do? I could sacrifice to draw. Three here. We gain three, and I can sacrifice a land. Hit Inspiration for free. So right now we have four going through, and we've got a bit more burn, but not enough to burn them out. Five plus three is eight, so damage happens. Kill this, maybe get to illuminate history. Finish off the angel. And we'll gain a bit of life. So did our opponent find Epiphany here? Another Starnheim unleashed, perhaps? All right, makes for angels, so we might have to burn them out. Do we have any shocks left? Three. Yeah, we should have one shock left, so Royal Eruption's guaranteed to hit shock, 
So that's seven damage to their face. So we're getting close to burning them out. I could Royal Eruption an Angel, hit Shock, kill the Spirits, and then attack with my ground team. Is that better? I think we start by attacking with our ground creatures here. Alright, so our opponent takes four down to seven. So a kicked Royal Eruption, guaranteed to hit Shock, should do it here. Alright, that was a sweet game. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. No Cody, but we have a turn to Epiphany we can foretell, and a bit of interaction with Command can also help us dig for Cody. Turn 1, clever Lumimancer. Well, our deck does have a lot of cheap burn spells, so... Small creature decks are usually fine matchups. As we see, not our Lumimancer. So turn two, do we foretell Behold or Epiphany is an interesting question. As we see, Guiding Voice, enable Magecraft and grab another lesson. So turn three, we're likely to cast Prismari Commands. So turn four, I guess we could cast a two mana Behold's Ants. Foretell or Alrun's Epiphany as a potential turn sequence. So I think foretelling Behold on turn 2 makes a little bit more sense. Yeah, we will be taking quite a bit of damage early on since we didn't have a Shock or Royal Eruption. Opponent is the Blue White's Magecraft version. As we see a third Lumimancer. So opponent setting up for a big turn next turn potentially. Defiant Strike. It's going to hit for at least 6. Alright, Inspiration's not bad. So, definitely need to cast commands in our own turn to avoid getting blown out by an instant. And then I might just make a treasure token to give us access to a bit more mana since my hand's not bad. We've got removal spells, we just need to mana to deploy them in time. So we'll deal two, make a treasure. Mavinda can get back a Defiant Strike here. So we'll have to take out Mavinda. But I think that leaves us dead since we're taking five. And next turn we're taking at least another six. And I don't think Ignis Inspiration is going to change much. I guess I can learn for a life gain spell with Sciences, which keeps me alive. Alright. Yeah, there's no other options here. So if they have any author, instant or sorcery, we're dead. And an opt will do it. Alright, GG's. Just needed a cheap removal spell this game to keep up. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a promising hand. We've got our Cody and double Lorehold Command, which is one of the better cards to cast on turn 4 with Cody's ability. So just need to hit one more land drop and we need Cody to survive. We're up against the mill deck. Alright, 
That does make our experimental overload more exciting since we'll have plenty of cards in graveyard. Backup Cody is nice. Don't think we need to kill the apprentice. Keep that for a ruin crab. So yeah, just needs a fourth land. And uh Still gonna run out Cody here before they can potentially counter it. Opponent keeps the cards on top. Hmm. Head is tempting to Inspiration the Ruin Crab. But, um. Yeah, we can just cast Inspiration next turn using Cody's ability to potentially take out Double Ruin Crab if we get lucky and hit a Royal Eruption instead of a Shock. Now, we don't have any great answers to enchantments in our deck. So. The Fairy's Tutelage could be problematic. Opponent passes with Counterspell Mana up. Well, let's see here. I wouldn't be able to use Cody's ability. So I guess we go for Royal Eruption on Ruin Cramp and get that countered. And then we can maybe later resolve Inspiration. Alright, so we're at 37 cards in library, but we have an active Cody now. And a few nice spells in hand. Crab mills us. Put and play their land tapped, so they probably have another counter spell up here. That's fine. So, yeah, we'll go for Lorehold Command. Deal three to the crab and make a spirit token. Cody still triggers even if they counter the command. It's gonna be a frantic inventory instead. Find a royal eruption. Killing an apprentice means the spirit has a better time attacking. Don't think we'll need to cast Restoration, so I'll play Tapped here. Five mana. And an Into the Story. Luckily, no tutelage in play to mill us. Get to untap. And yeah, let's go for another Lorehold Command. And kind of hoping for Experimental Overload here. And then maybe go for spirits and three damage to their face. I guess I could also give my team plus one plus one haste, which is better than dealing three to them since we'll be attacking with a four powered haste creature. We hit a shock, not the best, but still clears the apprentice. And we'll keep up shock. So now we're probably gonna see a tutelage into some card draw spells. They played their land, so no ruin crab. Into the royal gonna bounce Cody, fair enough. And our opponent keeps up a counter. Do I shock them end of turn? I think I do. Could just go on the burn plan and take an Cody. Start by attacking. Opponent takes it. So if I pass, worst case scenario, they cast another into the story. Uh, if they do, I can Prismari commands. Make a treasure deal two. So technically, if they don't have a counter spell, I could kill them just by dealing two and then dealing three. But if they are keeping up a counterspell and don't have an into the story, just passing the turn is probably the best we can do. So let's pass. No into the story. Serpent's just sitting on some counterspells. But they're facing two lethal creatures potentially. Cloud Kinsir's unexpected. Do I want to kill that in response to the draw trigger? Sure. 
So we'll deal two. And do we want to draw two? 29 cards left? Sure. And if they counter this, we get to untap and have free reign. Merfolk Wind Robber will keep them alive. Second Inspiration Kill Cloudkin Seer. Now if I had a different lesson in my sideboard, the one that deals one damage to a creature, we could have won the game here. Instead, I could go for Teachings just to draw two. Or I can play Cody, which is better, and then grab something nice and spicy like a mascot exhibition. Opponent's forced to chump, sacrifice a wind robber. And with 25 cards left, I guess my opponent could go tutelage into and into the story, but that's still not enough to kill me here. Maybe multiple Maddening Cacophonies could get there. There's a Tutelage. Mills us for two. And there's the Into the Story. Mills us for eight. So, yeah, Experimental Overload would make a 2020 weird token here as our opponent packs it in. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hand is pretty good if we can find blue mana. Uh, since we can always foretell this on turn 2 and then hopefully turn 3 Cody, turn 4 activate. I'll try it. We are essentially a 26 land deck if you count the Seagate Restoration opponent on a black-white token sacrifice deck. It's gonna be Clarion Spirits into Defiant Strike, makes a spirit. And we found our blue mana right on time. So it's tempting to play Cody. Alternatively, I could Inspiration Kill Spirit, get Sciences, so next turn I can Sciences and Behold. Or I could Commands, deal 2, make a Treasure to get more mana going. So a lot of options. I think I want to get Cody in play as soon as possible, so next turn I don't want to spend my turn casting Sciences. But I do want to be guaranteed to activate Cody the turn after, so I think deal two to Spirit and then make a treasure. I don't think there's any artifacts we care about saving the command for. Could also draw to discard two, which is likely to find me a land. So that's also an option here. Yeah, I guess that's also fair. And then discarding spells fuels our overload. So, discard two cards. We already have a Beholds waiting in exile, so we can discard one, and then maybe keep the more mana-efficient Royal Eruption and discard Inspiration. Alright, and then next turn we can finally play Cody, and hopefully we're not too far behind on board. Second Clarion Spirit. Yeah, our opponent's making a lot of tokens here. So if they have any way of pumping those up, we're gonna be in trouble. But I think I gotta get Cody out there. And then hope they can't remove Cody right away, otherwise we're gonna be pretty sad. Just an Inkling summoning, that's fine. And an attack with all. Is there any pump spell I should be worried about here for two mana? 
I don't think so. They also attacked with a Clarion Spirit, so we could just block there to prevent the most damage, or we can block a pest. Could be a village rights that they're keeping up too. Just a Defiant Strike on Spirits. So we're at 10. But now we can start leveraging Cody. So we can cast Lorehold Command. Take it from there. Or we could use Cody, 5 mana. We can cast Behold plus a Royal Eruption or Behold plus Overload. All those options are pretty good. Killing Clarion Spirit does seem like a priority. And then Lorehold Command would also give me more board presence. But I could also cast the Beholds with Cody and see what we hit. And then potentially cast a Royal Eruption afterwards. I should probably keep a red mana untapped here. Alright, we hit Ignis Inspiration, that's nice. I'll keep a Shock. Kill Clarion Spirits. Learn for... Let's go with Mascot Exhibition. And then Royal Eruption. The Inkling. And keep up Shock. Can maybe punish another Defiant Strike. It's going to be Hunt for Specimens. Getting reduced to memory, that's unfortunate. It's going to deal with our Cody. No blocks, we'll shock a spirit. Cody's exiled. And then we can now cast Lorehold Command thanks to our white mana. Could also overload, get back a removal spell and cast it. So, quite a few options. Next one we can cast Mascot Exhibition. So I'm liking overload, getting back. Doesn't really matter, shock here. Killing a spirit just gives us more bodies on the ground, too. And then we'll keep up the shock at instant speed, and I'll probably keep the 3-2 on defense. Don't think we need to try and race. Just gonna try and control the board. And our opponent packs it in. Alright, sweet. So, barely managed to stabilize. So yeah, overall, this Jeskai Cody deck is a blast to play. If Cody sticks around, good things happen. And then being able to win with various creature tokens or by just burning the opponent out is also very satisfying. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.